Today I'll be speaking on demystifying the Nigerian military. I grew up in part in the army barracks. It's a sheltered place where a line from Nigeria's old anthem, though tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand, rings apt and true. The rank and file as well as officers wore their uniforms with pride and dignity. It was always head turning to see a uniformed military man out in the society. They were not allowed to roam the streets of the nation for trivial matters. They were an exclusive and highly disciplined corps of professionals who were trained to defend the territorial integrity of the country. Sadly, our politicians have demystified the military. They should stop already. Did the Minister of Justice not listen to the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Jide Songwulu, at all? He said he invited the military. And the military has been going back and forth with statements and counter statements. And now, Malami says those who shot at protesters were hoodlums in army uniform. Like, seriously? Which version of the lucky shooting should we believe as citizens? By the way, I'd like to thank those soldiers who demonstrated warmth and shared humanity to Nigerians during those days of madness after the Lekki shooting. I think that was Oshun State. Watching them entertain those bystanders brought tears to my eyes. I am in distress at how the military has progressively been ridiculed in all of these. My heart breaks at the detain of the military going on right now. It's bad enough that hundreds of them have died in the Boko Haram onslaught. Why invite the military to the Lekki toll gate in the first instance? There was neither violence nor riots there. And I'm perpetually embarrassed at the unending pulling of the military into civilian affairs in Nigeria. Why are soldiers guarding palliatives stored in warehouses in Imo State, for goodness sake? There is an interior, interior ministry, isn't it? Can politicians please leave the military out of this messy porridge in the future? If we need something aching to the National Guard in the US, then let's create it through legislation. However, even the National Guard is not invited into the American society anyhow. October 20th, 2020 should never happen again in Nigeria. Can we have state police? In fact, that's what I'm advocating for today so that they can be under the jurisdiction of a state governor and he can call them at will. And then by all means, we must reform the police force and restore the military to defending Nigeria's territorial integrity. Mm, could be a two, uh, two points for me. Um, I disagree on that part where um, I think you said the Nigerian politicians are destroying the military. No. The military, stop the military them destroyed them. itself. The military destroyed, destroyed itself. Um, what, and so you still have a hangover of that behavior from them. If you remember why these protests were going on, there were statements issued by the chief of army staff back and forth, threatening that they were not going to fold their arms and allow, you know, um, subversion. Uh, a subversion of the democratic process as if that was his responsibility. If you remember also before the Lekki shooting, well-meaning Nigerians kept on calling on the president not to allow himself to be pushed into deploying military. And so you find out that the, at every point, they always have this superior you know, mentality kind of thing, believing that you know, when there's crisis, they should be the you know, one with superior firepower to come quell it, even though you know, shamelessly, the American Marine had to come from, um, or the American military had to come from America to rescue one of their own that was kidnapped in Niger, Niger and brought into our closed borders. Brought into Nigeria through our closed, closed borders. Supposedly closed border with Niger. Yeah. And shamelessly, they rescued one of theirs out of Nigeria. And now, after they, are, they issued a statement, our military are saying oh, it was a collaborative effort. So military destroyed itself. And so what the politicians is just simply doing is helping them, you know, further destroy themselves by using them to play dirty politics. That's the thing, using the, them. The, the, the military uh, is a creation of the Nigerian constitution. Section 217. 
of the 1999 Constitution as amended created the military. When you, when you read down that section, the function of the military and their powers, their jurisdiction is captured in the same constitution. So uh, it is actually sad when you see the military going outside its jurisdiction. In law, we say that jurisdiction is the lifeblood of litigation, that you cannot, uh, parties even by their agreement cannot confer jurisdiction on the court or themselves. So I think that the illegality of the military is one that uh, we need to condemn as a patent sin. And then for them to not just step out from their territory, step into the arena of the protest and open fire on protesters. Is, even if they is, were invited is, by the governor, it was an illegal invite. Yes, it's even if they were invited, they were, not ordered, they were not supposed to be ordered to shoot and all that. So I think it's a very uh, bad situation in this country. That, And I'm happy that the uh, International Criminal Court, uh, 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 through the Roman statute that created it, uh, is already investigating that shooting. And then they are coming up with um, um, some issues to, to clarify whether or not it falls under their jurisdiction to have that matter prosecuted. Uh, quickly, Aisha wants to say something. Well, okay. that. Aisha. Uh, so, so I was saying that uh, Malemi wasn't uh, uh, wrong when he, when he said hoodlums uh, had shot uh, at, at peaceful protesters because... Uh, indeed, the soldiers are, are, are hoodlums. They behave like hoodlums. They didn't <laughs> behave like the fine uh, uh, officers that we normally know that soldiers are supposed to be that act with pride. The, the ones we have today, they more or less behave like uh, hoodlums. And so for him to describe it, I was quite surprised. I was like, oh, okay, isn't that supposed to be hate speech uh, in, in itself? Uh, it, it's really sad what, what, what is going on in Nigeria. But we have to understand over time, what we have had is that the security uh, agencies, their allegiance is always to, to the president and the ruling party, rather than to Nigeria and Nigerians, rather than to the constitution that brought them in. So it's always about who has the political po power and they deploy them. We've seen situations whereby uh, elections were militarized as far back as 2014. I think it was the Ekiti Oshun ele election. All of this were militarized. So you wonder why military will be used uh, in, in, in cases uh, like this. Before even the, the, the Lekki shooting, uh, the first time they deployed military on the NSAS protesters was actually at the National Assembly, at the seat of the legislature. The National Assembly was where, where they deployed. We had gone, gone on a uh, protest, and the soldiers, and in fact, one of the soldiers actually kicked me. But I was so focused, my own was for them not to shoot anyone of the protesters that were there, because on that day also, they were ready to shoot. And we kept talking, why would uh, the government deploy military to the national to stop protesters exactly. uh, who Aisha. had simply gone peacefully to protest at the National Aisha. Assembly? But, uh, you know, as usual, uh, uh, many people, we didn't, many people didn't the bother about it. Making, went on. In the first instance, the military shouldn't even have been invited. We appreciate you sharing your opinions and comments with us. Chidi Abere Neviko Koroji makes a comment on our last advocacy by bringing to the forefront killings in river states. He says the ethnic cleansing going on in river states in the guise of chasing after IPOB to eliminate and kill people from southeast region is unacceptable and should be condemned by every Igbo man and woman. We must not keep quiet and allow the Nigerian military, police and the river state government to continue to kill Igbo people in River State and tag them as IPOB. Enough is enough. We are not goats or chicken that can be slaughtered anyhow. Ohaneze and the Southeast political leaders should intervene and call Wike to order. Hashtag end Igbo killings in River State. Also, Tony Abba says the truth and only truth. Governments with their cover up policy. No Nigeria army personnel was there, no shooting, no one died. Case closed. The next uprising could bring out the beast in the masses. We appreciate you all for sharing your opinions with us and thank you to Chide Bere and Tony Abba for your opinions as well. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platforms um, on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Evans recites a 
powerful poem for us today. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.